Welcome to worship with Late Nicomas Lutheran Church. May the Spirit of Christ uphold you in these challenging times. I am Chris Hagen, and I am blessed to be your pastor. Please refer to your, the worship aid in the comments section. Your worship responses are printed there. There is a congregational meeting scheduled for next Sunday, June 28th, to decide on calling a pastor. Um, you will receive in the mail both instructions on how to register and join the online meeting and information about the candidate for pastor. Next Sunday is the congregational meeting. Please look for the information in the mail. Today is the third Sunday after Pentecost. In the Gospel reading, Jesus is setting out priorities. Shall traditions and familiar ways prevail over the hard work of changing society, social order so as to make right and good? Let us begin in the name of God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be our God, the fountain of life, our sure and safe rock, our light of truth. Amen. Come, let us confess our sin before our merciful and loving God, who will forgive and who will welcome us once again. Holy Lord, gracious God, we have sinned and need your forgiving mercy. At times our words have hurt, at times our actions have harmed. We have failed to act when needed. Restore us that we might again reflect your kingdom and be your people. God loves you. For Jesus' sake, God forgives you. May the Holy Spirit now assure you and lead you in all righteousness. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us sing. The words are in the comments section, our worship bulletin.
Not a sparrow falls without you caring. Every one of your people are precious to you, so much so that you know even the number of the hairs on our head. The ways of this world, skewed and partial, shall not endure as your kingdom of mercy unfolds, and your people are lifted in honor. Amen. Percy, what you doing? Oh, hi, big bird. Nothing much. I see a new person moved into the neighborhood. Let's go check him out. Uh, oh, I think I see him. Hey, he's pink. What's that about? We don't have anyone pink in our neighborhood. Should we even? Go say hi to him? Hmm, well, don't you think that would be the nice thing to do? But he's pink! And it looks like he's a bird, too. There aren't any other birds around here that I know of. Well, so what if he's a bird? He's new, and Maybe he doesn't know anybody else. Oh, all right. Let's get closer. Oh, hi there, strange pink bird. Are you new here? Yes. My name is Flippy. <laughs> Flippy. <laughs> That's a weird name. It happens to be very special and important family name. I feel lucky to have it. Well, okay then, Flappy. <laughs> Did you know that you are the only pink bird around here? That makes you kind of weird. Uh, it's... Flippy. And I'm okay with being the only pink bird. Aren't you some kind of bird, too? Well, floppy or flouncy or whatever. Let, let's go, big bird. Pink birds are different from us. Well, you go ahead, Percy. I like pink. I think I'll stay and find out more about how Flippy got his name. Yay. Hi everyone. Wow, I don't know about you, but I was really glad that Big Bird was kind to Flippy. Has anyone ever talked to you the way that Percy talked to Flippy? He wasn't very nice to him. Well, they, sometimes that's the way things are. 
And having a friend to stick up for you can change everything. But what if there's no one to stick up for you? What if you're by yourself and someone picks on you? Well, here's the good news. The best friend you will ever have is always with you. Jesus is in your heart all the time. He loves you so much that he died for you. That's one way love acts. Love also puts its arms around you to comfort you. And love reminds you that you're a beautiful child of God, no matter what. You can never make God not love you. Whether you're the new pink bird in the neighborhood, or a mean penguin, or a kind big bird, or a person, God loves you for keeps. Would you pray with me? God, thank you for helping us to learn to treat each other with kindness. Thank you for friends who love us. Thank you for dads and moms and grandparents and teachers and all the people who help us. Thank you most of all for living in our hearts always, no matter what. Amen. A reading from Psalm 69. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant, for I am in distress. Make haste to answer me. Draw near to me, redeem me, set me free because of my enemies. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. Let the oppressed see it and be glad. You who seek God, let your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the needy and he does not despise his own that are in bonds. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus taught them, a disciple is not above the teacher nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than the sparrows. Everyone... Therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace unto the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. But those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. here in these verses. Do not think that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I've not come to bring peace but a sword, for I've come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. What in the world? You know, I like my dad. I, I have a wonderful dad. Happy Father's Day. What in the world is Jesus saying here? 
The fourth commandment given by God to Moses is honor your father and your mother. And Martin Luther's explanation in the small catechism is we are to fear and love God so that we do not despise or anger our parents and others in authority, but respect, obey, love, and serve them. So it appears Jesus is telling us to go disobey the commandments of God, to turn against our own kin and willingly break up families. What in the world is Jesus saying? Now, there are several ways of reading the Bible. Um, one way is reading the Bible as instructions of what to do, what is right behavior and proper attitude. But another is reading the Bible as description of what is true, an honest look at sin and God redeeming acts. Jesus is not giving instructions here. He's just describing reality. What Jesus is saying in this gospel reading is not meant to be instructions on what to do, but is a description of what is true. Jesus is laying out the facts that following Jesus, being godly people seeking justice, will lead to division. That trying to change things for the better will lead to conflict. Jesus came to redeem to change this world and change the way things are, to, to make things right, and that there will be resistance to change. And so Jesus is describing in these verses the reality that familiar habits and traditions will resist change, that comforts and privileges are hard to give up, that family ties and loyalties will pressure members to preserve the family even if those family ways are harmful. To make sense of this gospel reading, it is necessary to note who Jesus is talking to. Well, who is the audience? And this audience is those Christians who have chosen to follow Jesus. And because they have chosen to follow Jesus, to live the Jesus way. They have been thrown out of their families, cast out by their parents who demand family loyalty above God. Jesus is speaking to those who have been abandoned by family, who have nowhere to go, who have no protection or support from family, who, who are on the streets with nothing. In the time of Jesus, to be without family was to be a nobody, no name, no identity, having no access to help in time of need. To be without family, to have no say in, was to have no say in society. To be without family was to not be recognized or given a chance to have no place and belong nowhere, to have no home or shelter. Widows were such people. Orphans were such people. Lepers and beggars were such people. Foreigners were such people. No name, no one to defend, no one to help, no chance, no wealth. They were pushed aside, ignored, and left vulnerable. But Jesus is promising an alternative family. The church is family for those who don't have any support from kin. These verses of the Gospel of Matthew are not meant for us comfortable Christians who have most things going well. These verses of Matthew are meant for those followers of Jesus who strive to live faithfully and, 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 and to live honorably, and because of it, are rejected by their own father and mother. One of my favorite gospel hymns, Stand By Me, is a prayer for such people. It is a prayer directly to God, pleading for God to be anchor in life when all else is felt falling. Stand By Me was written from direct experience of having nothing left having the evils of the world descend and, and nowhere else to turn. 
Charles Albert Tinley, the songwriter, was born in 1851. His father was a slave and his mother was free, but his mother died when he was very young, and so he was taken in by his mother's sister in order to keep, in order to allow him to keep his freedom. In his book of sermons, he speaks of being hired out as a young boy wherever father could place me. In other words, a victim of child labor in the time when the economics of slavery were not easily given up. Tinley was largely self-taught throughout his lifetime. He learned to read mostly on his own. He took correspondence courses toward becoming a, a Methodist minister. Tinley was known for being a captivating preacher and for taking an active role in the, in the betterment of people in his community. Now in the time following the Civil War, in the time of restoration and Jim Crow, uh, reconstruction and Jim Crow, in the time of violence and lynchings and rape of African Americans, Charles Tinley wrote, when the storms of life are raging, it is a prayer for strength to endure. It is a prayer for hope when all is aflame. It is a prayer to survive. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, thou who rulest wind and wave, stand by me. In the midst of tribulation, stand by me. When the hosts of hell assail and, and my strength begins to fail, thou who never lost a battle, stand by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When my life becomes a burden and I'm nearing chilly Jordan, O thou lily of the valley, stand by me. When the world has gone off its rails and give anchor in these shifting times, when my voice is ignored, my wisdom dismissed, my face unseen, thou who knowest all about me, stand by me. And may the one who never lost the battle, who rulest wind and water, stand with you now and always. Amen. of life are raging as our nation rises in protest, as pandemic sweeps the country, as our assumptions and comforts are challenged, stand by me, stand with us in this changing time. Hold our world together in your righteous embrace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. 
God of life and health, look upon your beloved who endure challenges to body, mind, and spirit. Bring wholeness and healing, give comfort and community. Grant hope and joy in the midst of health challenges and life worries. Remember those who we name aloud or silently. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Restore our communities and rebuild businesses, compassionate God, that once again our neighborhoods and towns may flourish. Keep us diligent with masks and sanitizing so that the pandemic might subside. Let our better natures prevail over impulse and selfish will. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, we are blessed to be part of your worldwide universal church. Continue to bless our partners, congregations of the Minneapolis Area Synod, congregations of other denominations, the churches of the Kubi District of the Lutheran Church of Christ of, in Nigeria, and the many businesses, organizations, and caring individuals who are fulfilling your mission in the world. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Guiding Spirit, we are grateful for the diligence and faith of our call committee. Thank you for leading them to discern a candidate for call to this church. We each have our preferences and ideas of who a pastor should be, but open our minds and hearts to hear who you would have the next pastor to be. Preside over our congregation meeting next week that we listen to your voice. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For fathers and father figures who give us life and guide our ways, thank you, God creator. Make homes safe and protect families that all in them may grow to become the fullness of Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for your consistent support of Lake Nicolmus Lutheran Church through your offering, either mailed to the church or through simply giving, an automatic and easy way to support our ministries. Let us pray together. Generous Savior, thank you for the privilege of giving to your kingdom work. May this money and the service we give further your ministry in our church and throughout the world. Amen. Let us now enter into Holy Communion. Uh, before we begin, you may want to pause this worship and prepare the elements for communion if you have not yet done that. Any kind of bread or cracker is, avail uh, is, is acceptable. Any kind of wine or fruit juice or even water will suffice for the cup. And once you are ready, let us continue. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty and merciful God, you are holy and great is your glory. Out of love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. O Lord, pour out upon us the spirit of your love, Unite all of us who share this heavenly food. To Jesus Christ, our Lord, to you, our Creator, and to the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ has invited us to this table. Whoever you are, however you feel, for whatever reason you are here, come to the feast. Whatever your condition, whatever questions you have, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, know that our host is the one who has given his life for the world, the one who was raised to new life, and the one who invites us to come to the table. Amen. Take the bread. And as you eat, remember that Jesus promises, this is my body given for you. Sip the cup and remember that Jesus promises, this is my blood shed for you. Let us pray together. God of abundance, in this time of isolation and deprivation, you come, you heal, you unite yourself with all people. Send us forth with your spirit that we bear your grace in our being and that we be your kindness in words and deeds, that we share your hope for the sake of our neighbors and for the sake of the world. Amen. Now, let us sing. of the living Christ lead you, encourage you, and give you peace. Almighty God, Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Be kind. Be hope. Be blessed. All God's children said, Amen!
friends, let's go on a tour of little known places at Lake Nokomis Lutheran Church. These are some places you might not know about in our building. Today we're looking at the Sunday School craft room. What do we have in here? Lots and lots of things. Ah, oh, look at this. A box full of crayons. Whoa, every color. Let's see what else we have. A box full of stickers. Lots and lots, hundreds of stickers. What else do we have? Yeah! 